Subscribe to History Muffin to show your support for priest elephant marriage. Come on, sweetheart. You know, we should try this cute little Tuscan cafe I found. They make this chocolate biscotti that you would absolutely love. I know. In the year 1801, there lived a menacing figure, a scourge of the high seas, who terrorized the coastal lands of southern China and whose power and influence was so great that no man dared defy her. A figure of such iron discipline that any man who crossed her would be hunted to the end of his days. A figure of such ill repute that her very name stole fear into the hearts of all who heard it. She was a pirate queen. She was a ruler of the oceans. And her name was... Mrs. Cheng. Really? Is that her name? Uh, apparently. The most powerful pirate in world history is called Mrs. Cheng. Yeah, that's what everybody calls her. She's not called the Red Widow, not the Terror of the South Sea. No, just... just Mrs. Cheng. Oof, I gotta say, that's kinda... kinda underwhelming, don't you think? Oh god, she's here! And it was. English sources called her Cheng She, or Widow of Cheng. But contemporary Chinese records name her literally Mrs. Cheng. Sounds a lot like that nice old lady who lives upstairs from you. Hi, Mrs. Cheng. Oh, hello, Colin. Have you had lunch today? Uh, no, not yet. Well, I was thinking of making a delicious butternut squash soup. Either that, or create the largest confederation of bloodthirsty pirates this world has ever seen. Well, I'll let you know which one this afternoon. Everyone's heard of pirates like Blackbeard, Sir Francis Drake, and Johnny Depp, but surprisingly, not many have heard about Cheng She, the Chinese pirate queen, and literally the most successful pirate in human history. At her height, she commanded a confederation of over 70,000 pirates, some sources say. That's 30 times more than all the pirates of the Caribbean. Now, here's the big question. How could a woman rise to become the leader of the largest pirate army in the world? It all started in a brothel in Canton, China. I'm not exactly sure what a brothel is, but here's my best guess. Oh, don't pull that one. It'll fall. Oh, okay. Thanks. Oh, uh, connect four. Oh, nice. You want, you want to play again? Okay. It was here where the infamous pirate lord, Cheng Yi, fell madly in love with Mrs. Cheng. Look at her. She has a face like no other. You have won this Scrabble match, and therefore, my affections. As a token of my love, I shall give you these Scrabble tiles that say, Marry me. Whoa, 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 don't go thinking it's that easy to win me, Hardy. Pirate joke. I better be getting a bangin' bridal gift for this. Of course, I plan to buy you gowns of the finest silk. Yeah, how about command of half your fleet, buddy? Yeah, see, I was thinking more like a weekend spa package. No dice, Rico. You want a lifetime of gazing into these gorgeous eyes? You better be putting a patch over one of them. Thus began the romantic courtship of this violent criminal power couple. Cue the rom-com montage. This time, the South China Sea was awash in pirates. Awash, lal. In the years before, Vietnam was embroiled in the Tay Son Rebellion. The ruling dynasty in Vietnam was hiring every pirate they could get their hands on to help squash the rebellion, and rewarding the pirates with gold, weapons, safe harbor, novelty toys, you name it. Although the ruler of Vietnam lost the rebellion and got executed by elephants, boop, 
At this point, more than 50,000 pirates were cruising the seas looking for booty. Miss Chang and Cheng Yi, heads of a sizable pirate fleet, decided to find a legal heir who would succeed them in their command. And why have a baby when you could adopt a grown man? By the way, did we mention Cheng Yi was a bisexual icon? So not only did he need to find a man he could legally adopt as his son, but he needed to find a hot man he could legally adopt as his son. Oh hey, I noticed you walking around the boat lately. Huh, fancy that. Anyway, I was wondering... Mmm, firm. You know, maybe we could get some dinner sometime? See if there's a good connection? One thing leads to another, we could, uh, you know, become father and son. In an effort to take things slow and steady, Chung Yi and the young hot Chung Po immediately became adopted family and gay lovers. Cue adopted family gay lover montage! During the gay family montage, Miss Chung and Chung Yi used diplomatic skill to unify the largest pirate fleets in the South China Sea into one massive pirate confederation, headed by their own fleet, the Red Flag Fleet. In 1807, Chung Yi died in Vietnam. Maybe squished by an elephant? Boop. And Chung Bao took his place as general of the confederation. Miss Chung needed to retain her authority and solidify her position fast. But how? Oh, hey, son. I noticed you leading the Pirate Confederation lately. Huh. What do you know? So anyway, mmm, firm. I know what you're thinking. What in the Oedipus is going on here? But for Miss Chung, nothing would stop her from being the Pirate Queen, not even taking her adopted son slash husband's boy toy as her own lover. Cue adopted son slash husband's gay boyfriend turned younger boy toy lover montage. No. Too much montage. This is the period Miss Chung really came into her own. Pirate Queen style. New outfit unlocked. While her son with benefits became battle commander of the Red Flag Fleet, Miss Chung started to flex her tactical, disciplinary, and business acumen. She started accounting for profits, expenses, and dealing a fair ration to her men based on their station. Rather than pillaging coastal villages, she instead secured protection money in exchange for them not being murdered, and managed to turn civilian townships' loyalty to her rather than the Chinese government. Miss Chung is most famed for her strict code of laws that apply to all her men and the draconian punishments they carried. Disobey orders? Beheaded. Steal from the communal fund? Beheaded. Withhold large amounts of booty? Beheaded. Attacking protected villages? Written warning. No, no, I'm just kidding. Beheaded. She also forbade the rape of female captives. Instead, anyone who wanted to have sex with a captive had to marry her, which I'm sure female captives really preferred. Beautiful captives were made pirate wives, while unattractive ones were let go. You're free to go. Really? Why me? Just... So ugly. Her adroit administrative skills caused her confederation to expand to unprecedented numbers, due to plunder, extortion, and patronage money from merchants in Canton's lucrative salt trade, the Magic Best Friends Pirate Club became so rich they were able to establish financial offices on the Chinese mainland. Hi, welcome to Buccaneer Financing. My name's Amy. I'll be your personal financial advisor. Can I get you anything? Tea? Grog? No thanks. Actually, we're looking to take out a loan. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's a great time for it. The Qing government is in shambles right now. So as of now, we offer 0% APR financing for two years, after which your loan can be paid in doubloons or buried treasure. Also, we don't invoke any penalties for late payments, but we will kill you in front of your whole family. So, if the fine print looks good, we can go ahead and cut our palms while holding these cursed Aztec medallions. The Qing Dynasty hated the Pirate Queen for her string of murders and lawlessness, and that her fashion sense was better than theirs. Ooh, strike a pose. 
but they were powerless to do anything since Mrs. Cheng deflected every of their repeated attacks. Despite enlisting Dutch bounty hunters to come after her and putting her on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list, Mrs. Chang proved time and time again that she was an independent woman who didn't need no man except for her husband's son. However, Mrs. Chang ended up growing a little too big for her breeches, pirate pun, and started to interfere with European trade, most notably the Portuguese Empire and East India Company. After Miss Chang accidentally killed an entire boat of Portuguese traders, oops, the Portuguese Navy rolled up their sleeves and launched the Battle of the Tiger's Mouth in late 1809. Now, the Red Flag Fleet might have been able to embarrass the Chinese government for many decades to come, but government forces combined with a regimented, professional navy like the Portuguese essentially told Mrs. Cheng that she was heading for Davy Jones' locker. It's a pirate thing. At the Battle of the Tiger's Mouth, between the areas that would one day be Macau and Hong Kong, the Portuguese repeatedly and continually dragged the Red Flag Fleet through the dirt. Despite having like six boats against 500 pirate ships, the Portuguese accurate explosive artillery decimated the enemy fleet, who were too cumbersome and disjointed to put up much of a fight. By January 1810, Mrs. Cheng knew her shivers were about to be timbered. It's just good business. And realized, after all, maybe it's not a pirate's life for me. It was time to show off her diplomatic prowess one last time. In the face of defeat, she marched into the office of the governor of Guangdong to sue for peace. You there, little boy. I'm the governor. Don't you talk back to me, young man. Now you're gonna sit your pretty little behind in that chair while I tell you how this deal is gonna go down. Our terms have already been dis- Don't make me take off the other flip-flop. Let me tell you what we're gonna get. We keep it to money, we keep some of our ships, and not one of my crew goes to jail. You're kidding, right? That's insane, that's- Okay, all right, fine. Jesus Christ. And so it was. On that day, 40,000 pirates of the Red Flag Fleet surrendered their arms and walked away free men. Some, including Miss Chung's son in love, even got esteemed positions within the Chinese Navy. Mrs. Cheng retired to a quiet life, running a gambling house in Macau and living to the ripe old age of 69. Nice. And so, even after countless crimes against humanity, the Pirate Queen sailed off into the sunset, loaded with all the money she ever stole and suffering literally zero consequences. There's a lesson to be learned here. No matter the station you're born into, you too can rise to the top, as long as you work hard and never obey the law. And when the situation looks hopeless, channel your inner Mrs. Cheng. Just take off your favorite pair of flip-flops, Raise them above your head and then just start beating the sh-